Welcome, welcome everyone to another webinar with the Gray Muzzle Organization. We're going to give everyone a few minutes to join this awesome webinar on creating a bucket list for your senior dog with Dr. Mary Gardner. So while we're waiting, if you wouldn't mind, you know, dropping in the chat box where you're tuning in from, if you have a senior dog, if you care for senior dogs at a shelter, I always love hearing their names too. I did dog named Fizzle, so I always um, love hearing if there's some unique names out there. Um, so yes, definitely tell us where you're tuning in from and if you've listened to a webinar before, et cetera. I was gonna check the chat box, but we're so grateful to have you here. I'm gonna give you a little background on myself um, for anyone new that isn't familiar with Gray Muzzle and then we'll go into the topic. So my name's Jackie, I'm on the board of directors, which is a volunteer position here at the Gray Muzzle. And I have been in shelter work for over a decade, which is what drew me here. So I've been caring as a rescue coordinator, as an executive director. Um, but what drew me to Gray Muzzle is my love of my life dog, Fizzle. I had since he was two years old, I've always been drawn to adult dogs. But as he aged, I always saw super senior dogs in shelters and couldn't imagine my own dog in that environment, scared and afraid and in such a chaotic environment. And Gray Muzzle's mission is to not let old dogs die alone and afraid in shelters. And it's so what I relate to because I would have never wanted Fizzle in that environment. So once I lost him, all I focus on now is adopting and fostering hospice dogs or super old dogs. I'm on my third hospice dog in the past two years. Um, and people think that's so sad, but it's to me, it's not sad. I'm so grateful to have them with me for the time I had. I had one for 18 months, and then I had one for about seven months because he had oral melanoma. So it's just very rewarding. And it's so neat that Gray Muzzle helps that happen for so many dogs across the country. For those who aren't familiar with Gray Muzzle, it's main focus is giving funding to other rescue and shelter organizations so they can then help senior dogs, whether it's getting them into forever homes, getting them medical care, even just a comfy bed if that's what they need, but a lot of dentals, a lot of medical care, and we do that in grant form. So we're just wrapping up our grants from 2023. In 2022, we gave $705,000 to 78 organizations, and that helped 3,300 senior dogs have that perfect retirement and not die alone and afraid in a shelter. So that's really thankful to you guys, all our supporters that share our posts, that donate, that tell other people, I mean, all that comes down to you guys that have helped support Gray Muzzle through the years. So I cannot thank you enough. We will announce in the next couple of months the 2023 grants that we're giving out. So stay tuned for that. And one other housekeeping, we have an uh, online option kicking off June 7th. So that's another great way to help if you could. Um, lots of great items to bid on. Tell your friends. Um, definitely a great way. And then you get something out of it too while you're helping senior dogs. Um, and then finally, our amazing speaker, who again is very close to my heart because no matter how many dogs you help in rescue, when it's your own animal, making the decision of when it's time to let go is extremely hard. And Dr. Mary Gardner is the co-founder of Lap of Love, which is focused on hospice and in-home euthanasia care with vets, 300 plus vets across the country um, help come to your home and help you make those decisions when it's time to let your pet go. Thankfully, we're going to talk about before then making that bucket <laughs> list and have fun with them before they have time to go. She also has a book, um, It's Never Long Enough, and I can't imagine a more perfect term because any time it's never long enough. That's all I do is say that about my own dog. So I'm interested to hear what Dr. Mary Gardner has to tell us especially with my own hospice dogs, what we can do to make their last days as enjoyable as possible. Sometimes it's not what we think, it's what the dog really needs. So I can't wait till she gives us those <clears throat> ideas. Throughout the session, we're going to have some a few minutes at the end. So please pop your questions in the chat box and in Facebook Live, and we'll be able to ask Dr. Mary when she's done any questions you might have. Dr. Mary, please go ahead. Jackie, okay. thank you. I'm with you. I love the old crusties and lumpy and bumpy and the stink, skinny and the stinky dogs the best. 
And uh, I myself adopt older pets too, because they they are they're just they're just awesome. So I'm really happy to to be here to talk about a little bit of a happier topic. I know I've been invited <laughs> before to do some lectures, which can be a little heavy on our heart. So um, although this this can uh, bring up some emotions as well as we think about our pets and when to say goodbye and, and what we can do before, um, hopefully it won't be as sad as some other ones. And it's just for I really just want to inspire everyone to um, to have a little bit of fun in those last few few months, weeks, uh, days, and to get, like I said, a little creative. So this topic is how to create a bucket list for your senior dog. And um, I'm going to give a lot of examples. And as you said, we can we can ask questions at the end, but people can post them now if they if they're top of mind. So I just want to talk first about different kind of lists, because I, I know I'm going to talk about bucket lists, but there's another kind of list that can be made, and that's uh, your pet's favorite things or the, the things that bring them joy, so the joys of living. And they're very different, actually. So a favorite things list is all of the things that they like to do typically now, right? Because what I like to do when I was 18 is different than what I like to do now. Um, and, uh, and it's, it may include some things that they can't do now though. So it might be something that maybe it is to go to the beach and now they, they can't, they can't get on the beach at all, but it's something that is really vitally important to your pet to make them, you know, who they are. So I always say my, my boy, Duncan, like what made Duncan Duncan? And then a bucket list is something a little bit different. So I want to give you some examples of joys of living. So this was buddy. Buddies list, and these are all people who send me either I've helped them in their in their uh, in their home with end of life care, or they found about found out about me and asked me questions or read my book and sent sent me great pictures. So for Buddy, his joys of living were things like um, uh, walking to a certain park, uh, a, a favorite a fruit snack of his, sunny afternoon in and in in at the local park. And mom was keeping to, to check them off to make sure that Buddy was still doing these favorite things or the things that gave him joy. Henry, this, this is one of my favorite ones. You know what? They're all my favorite lists. I, I, everybody's got such great ideas. So I shouldn't say that. They're all awesome. But Henry's is fun. And they got the kids involved in this. And so they listed all the things that Henry loves to do. So for instance, he loved to take naps, opening Christmas presents and wrapping the shredding paper. And there's a picture of him doing just that shredding the wrapping paper, um, his family, uh, his, his octopus toy, bobbing for ice cubes, baby pools and mud, paper towel rolls and boxes, and his gray bed. So it was really kind of important for the family to include the kids. And I can't tell you how, um, how important that is because it helps children express their emotions and um, gives them a sense of involvement in, in their pet's life and also their goodbye. So here he is with his shredding, uh, his wrapping paper that's all shred up, but here he is also in his uh, gray bed and his mud pool. <laughs> so what I love about doing these lists is also getting the pictures and the videos of them doing it because then later on you can reflect back at them doing these favorite things because we hyper-focus so much on the bad things that are happening, whether it's incontinence or slowing down or vomiting or not eating or um, you know panting and pacing at night and things like that. But I really would like us to focus on some of the good things that they still have left. My neighbor, here he is, Tom, his dog Sandy was uh, slowing down and she loved to go for walks all around this, the neighborhood and just say hi to everybody. So she was, because she was slowing down, she couldn't do it for uh, all the time. So he went and got her a golf cart. Now I'm not saying to go buy golf carts, but he got a golf cart for Sandy so she could still go around the neighborhood. And we all heard the golf cart. We knew Sandy was coming like, like the ice cream truck and we'd all go out and say hi to her because she just loved to visit everybody. So um, Sandy's an angel now, but that was great that uh, dad did that. This is Duke. Duke was uh, a German Shepherd mix, and he had a disease called degenerative myelopathy, which, which uh, basically in the end, it paralyzed him. But, but if you can hopefully watch this video, his favorite thing was to go for runs with mom. So she, and, and the runs could be also in his cart. And dare I say, he looks pretty happy. And she says, if she didn't do this with him every day, he got a little cranky. <laughs> so there's Duke enjoying his, his favorite thing and going out with mom. Now, what I like about favorite things list 
is that it can be used to help you evaluate the quality of life of your dog. So if you know that your dog loves to do these 10 favorite things, when they start or when they stop doing those things, it may help you amongst other things, evaluate the quality of life and, and when to say goodbye. And I've had many people do this. Now, what I, what I don't, and I talk a lot about this in the quality of life lecture that I did, is some people say, oh, you'll know when it's time to say goodbye when, they, when, they, when you make a list of their five favorite things and they stop doing three of them, then it's time to say goodbye. The problem with that is, is that depending on their disease that they have, they may not stop doing the favorite things that they love to do. So if you have on your list laying next to me watching TV, um, you know, uh, eating and you've got a beagle that's got or a Labrador that's got arthritis, they're going to eat on the very last day. Normally, if all they have is arthritis, is really bad mobility and going for walks is not on your list, yet they can't really move very much. So. Um, so there's a lot more to evaluating quality of life than just making a list and checking it off. And when they don't do these things, they don't do them, but it can be one of many tools used to help evaluate quality of life. So I, I really do encourage you to create these and have a little bit of fun with it. But what I also like to recommend is if there's something that they hate. So this was my Duncan and he was a red Doberman and he hated the Goodyear blimp that flew over my house. Now I live in South Florida. I saw that, uh, I think it was Elena who's in Boca Raton. So uh, this is when I lived up in Lighthouse Point and uh, the Goodyear blimp threw over, flew over my house like 10 and four and he went bonkers for it. But it was him, you know, protecting the house from the Goodyear blimp. And, um, and he was so like enthralled on hating it. And so when I saw that he was so tired, he didn't care anymore about the Goodyear blimp, that that was a sign for me that it was something he loved to hate, actually. So don't just add all the things they love if you're going to be using this for, evalu uh, for evaluating quality of life. So now those are joys of living list, which can be different than the bucket list. The bucket list is um, what you all probably know is the things you want to do or accomplish before it's too late that you can't do them or 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 in human world is that we die, right? So where are the places that you wanna visit or what would you like to do before you pass? And so that's the same thing with our dogs is what would we like to do um, before they pass? So I, I like to set fun and relevant goals for today. So we don't need to go for a four mile walk anymore, but if it's just around the, you know, around a certain park that they used to love and whether it's in a, in a stroller or a wagon, cause that's all that you can get, uh, that's okay. But we, we don't have to make them grand. They don't have to be massive. Small things are okay. And I'll show you examples. Um, and base them, like I said, on their health status. So if they're, I don't want to drag a dog to the beach because you want them to experience the beach one more time. And they've got anxiety and mobility issues where that's actually going to be a very difficult struggle for them. So, so make it relevant for their health status because we don't want to force them to do something that they don't like. These are supposed to be things that they would enjoy or that you would enjoy, um, but not stress them out. So um, it's what you want to do for your dog or have your dog experience. So I love them because when it does come time to say goodbye and you've checked off all of those activities, you will still be sad that you've said goodbye to your dog but you will have no regrets because it will feel like you've done everything. You are all probably caring uh, amazingly for your dogs, uh, but, but there's always a little bit of regret. Like you could have done something. You could have gotten one more picture, one more video, one more this, one more that. And so this is the way that you could check it off. And you could do things multiple times. So you can have a couple checks next to each list. And it really allows you to focus on the tender moments, the, the good moments that you still have um, and that your pet is present for. And, and then after they've gone, you can reflect back on them with, with a smile on your face. So some people need a little inspiration on what to do for bucket lists. And this is, um, this is the fun part. And these are just some really great examples that families I've helped uh, send in. So this was Greg and Greg had Yogi. Yogi was a, uh, a yellow lab and Yogi loved the lake. So his dad, Greg, put a soft bed in like a garden cart and wheeled Yogi there to enjoy the view and smell the air days before he said goodbye. So we don't want to stress Yogi out and try to make him walk there, but he brought him there and Yogi just sat there for hours with his mouth open, just smelling everything and just really enjoying things. And people would come by and you can't read that little sign, but it, but it says uh, Yogi Bear Burks and for to come say, get, some come say hi, because he loved to, to visit with people too. So people were coming over and saying hi to him. 
And this is his goodbye day, actually. And so Yogi had arthritis and that's a yellow lab. So uh, he's still hungry. And so he still ate. And I said, well, Greg, since he still has an appetite, he can have whatever he wants on his goodbye day. And so he got pizza, um, hamburgers, and those are corn dogs wrapped up. <laughs> and, and you could just and see the smile on his face. And so afterwards, Greg had no regrets that, that Yogi had a really good goodbye. Here's another example. This is a five guys bucket list item. So they went to five guys. Now, I do warn you that you don't want to stuff like really bad food uh, when they still have time left uh, because that could give them pancreatitis and, and upset bellies and diarrhea and things like that. So some of these are very close to passing like the day before or the day of um, to do and just kind of enjoy and, and let, them, let them have at it. And here's Cooper's bucket list. Weekend camping at mile seven in a fire pit with the family, quality time with grandpa and friends, a fire grilled steak, pizza bones, I don't know what that means, and popcorn. And so they made sure that they checked off all of these before they said goodbye to Cooper. See, so it doesn't have to be this grandiose thing, which is quality time. Man, wouldn't we all like more time with our pets? And so just focusing on that will help you. Lucy's family wanted to make sure she gets one more picture with Santa. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know, Lucy loved it so much. It was on her bucket list, but it was certainly on their bucket list. And uh, isn't she just the cutie, a cutie patootie? And here's uh, Duke again. So Duke was that uh, dog that was in the cart uh, with mom. And, and her bucket list item was actually to go hiking uh, around Colorado and go hit some of the, the big mountains. And Duke was actually very skilled in his in his wheelchair, so this was not uh, any stress to him. He was he was always a runner and, and went hiking with mom, so she had him fitted with a wheelchair. And they went they did a summer. It was two summers ago, and they did a whole summer where they were just hiking to all the places around Colorado before she had to say goodbye to him. And they and this was a picture she was doing it, and there was a photographer on the trail. And, and it just, they started to get in, a, in chatting and she said what she was doing. And so he offered to take some really beautiful professional pictures. And speaking of professional pictures, I definitely encourage to set up a photo shoot and have certain things that, um, you know, that your pet loved to be a part of the photo shoot. So this family, their dog loved tennis balls. And hopefully you can see some of the tennis balls in the, in the foreground. But um, if you actually pan back and saw the, the full picture, it was a field full of a thousand tennis balls and then them at the end of the field um, because he loved tennis balls. So it was a way to just capture the favorite things about their dog and have it in picture format. So I love scheduling a, um, a photographer and you could go on Thumbtack or some of these apps and find local photographers for really economical prices. I did uh, one of my favorite photo shoots with, was with my dog, Sarissa, and it was about $300. And I said, these are the five things I want to capture. And she did such an amazing job. I would have spent 10 times that amount for, for what she produced for me. Um, and so it was really good. And they usually know the local area that we could you know, find parks or, or special places. Uh, this was, I saw this, I have a, a book, which I'll mention at the end, a little workbook, and it has the bucket list in it. And so, uh, so this woman, Erin, made Fig Newton's bucket list, and then she posted it on her Instagram. And I thought it was great because it's inspiring others as well. So it was go to the beach, afternoon at Bill's, ride in Ryan's truck, bacon, make a new friend. And look at the ones that she's checking off. So this is in the, you know, in the process of doing the list. Dinner out, time at park, open presents, meat and cheese every moment with mom. Um, what is that? Elk's Orange Farm? I guess it's a place. Dance dance party with Miley. Never ending belly rubs and more meat and cheese. <laughs> Lucky Fig Newton. So, um, and Fig Newton was a black lab with mobility issues. Uh, and Fig Newton and mom lived actually in Maui in Hawaii. And, uh, and so boy, the pictures are beautiful for Fig Newton. Now this one's an awesome list. This is Edie's bucket list. And so it is have a pizza party and ice cream, snuggle with mom and dad weekend mornings, find a new park and take a walk, cast a paw print, doggy photo shoot, go on a hike with grandma and grandpa, breakfast in bed with dad, steak dinner, throw a birthday party, but don't invite Emily. I don't know what that's about. Sunbathing and picnic in the park and bonus, ride in a fire truck. 
So they checked off all these things. And wouldn't you agree that when it came time to say goodbye to Edie, that um, they were sad, but they had no regrets. They did everything. But here's some pictures from Edie's bucket list days. So there's dad at a new park, the steak dinner, breakfast in bed with dad. Like that's just awesome. A pizza party, finding a new park. I mean, Edie's just adorable. And then the piste de resistance is the ride in a fire truck, the bonus that actually happened. And I just love Edie's bucket list. Now, if you remember, there was one that said, uh, I'll go back to it, the bottom one, near the bottom, it says, throw a birthday party and don't invite Emily. <laughs> so I asked them, I said, hey, what's up with Emily? Like, why does she not like Emily? And she goes, no, that's, that doesn't say Emily. Uh, so Edie was pretty old. She was about 16 years old. And so they said, we didn't think she was going to make it to her next birthday party. So we said, throw a birthday party and throw it earlier. And so actually she made it to her 16th birthday party. So they didn't have to do her birthday party early. So it doesn't say Emily, it says early. So Edie made it to a big birthday party. And this is my own personal bucket list. This was my boy, Duncan. He had, um, although he had one disease called, um, uh, laryngeal paralysis. That wasn't the disease that actually ended his life. It was heart disease. And it's very common in Dobermans. And Duncan is my second Doberman I had. And when my first Doberman passed, I really wanted another Doberman. I just, I wanted that presence, that smell, you know, there's certain smells for certain breeds, certain hair that we just love or fur. And so I adopted Duncan when he was six years old. And everyone says, are you crazy adopting a six-year-old Doberman? And what you never know what you're going to get. And I say, you don't really know what you're going to get with a puppy either. Okay. So yes, I'm going to go adopt a senior. But we enjoyed a steak dinner three times, a slumber party with mom out in the living room two times, visits from all his girlfriends, because uh, all my friends loved him, soaking in the sun, <laughs> chasing people off his property, including the Goodyear blimp, <laughs> peeing on the neighbor's plants, have an in and out party snuggle with mom and dad in bed, lots of kisses with mom and dad, make a new friend and chase the mail truck. <laughs> so I made sure that we were able to do all these. And here he is enjoying his in and out which is uh, uh, a like hamburger place out in California. And I mentioned this earlier about having the kids help. And so I really do love inviting kids to help. I have two activities, uh, activity books that are available on, on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And it's for dogs and cats. And it's got a lot of activities. And in it is a list of bucket list um, uh, examples and for the kids to get involved. Now, I, I lectured, I should have had this picture up here. I just lectured um, two weeks ago in South Florida to an elementary school. And it was there, uh, it was about 40 kids and they were, they were taking a business class and they were in, in sixth to, to eighth grade. And so they wanted me to come in and talk about how to run a business and how I got into vet school and things like that. And they were, they were wonderful. But I, was, I talked about passing of, of, of dogs and cats because that is what I do. And, and, um, and I was asking about if they had ever lost a pet and you know, a half of them raised their hands and we were talking about it. And I was asking where they had said goodbye. And this one girl raised her hand and uh, they were, they were the most amazing group of kids. Like they are really uh, lectures I've ever done. They were the most engaged audience I've ever had. Um, and this girl raised her hand and she said that she had two dogs and that, and then she just started crying and she could barely get it out. And she finally, you know, composed herself. And she says, I came home from school one day and my other dog wasn't there. And my, and so my parents did it without me. And she was just in so much tears and grief because she's like, I could not say goodbye to him. And so a lot of times parents don't know what to say to their kids. They don't know, they're, they're scared to have this conversation. And I wanna encourage you to have this conversation. It's, um, they're actually way more receptive than you realize. They, um, and involving them in the final weeks and days, involving them in things like the bucket list or the wish list or the uh, joys of living list can really help them process what's going on and help them say goodbye too, because they, they deserve to say goodbye. A lot of times these are pets that they've grown up with as well. So don't be scared to get kids involved. And here is uh, the inside of the page where uh, in that children's book that I've got or the activity book for Buddy's, Buddy's Bucket List. And, uh, and I've just had a, um, an illustrator make all of these little cartoons for it. 
And here's Henry's favorite things. If you remember Henry, uh, I had a, uh, an artist, like I said, do illustrations of all of his favorite things just for fun. And you could, you could get illustrations done of your dog or cat like on Fiverr or Upwork. There's so many wonderful artists out there that you send them pictures and they'll make illustrations. Now I know we're talking about dogs, but why not talk about cats right now? Because real fast, because I have so many people that say I could come up with dog ideas, but I don't know about cat ideas. And do I have any inspiration? So I thought I'd take this opportunity because um, a lot of pet lovers still also like cats. And here's Tigger's bucket list. Let him go down in the basement. <laughs> Lots of walks in his backpack carrier. Leash time supervised when the weather is nice. A catnip party. Snacks at least once a day. Lots of nap time and pets. Professional photo shoot. Telling him I love him every day. One new treat or toy every two weeks. Here's Mingo. Mingo is my kitty cat. And this is um, my bucket list for Mingo. Licking uh, whipped cream, family photo, cuddles, favorite snacks, sit in a paper bag, play with uh, catnip, eat some grass, uh, FaceTime with Aunt Sharon. And again, I had this illustrator make it for the cat version of the activity book. Here's Allie getting some chicken tender. A lot of to do with food, I noticed. And you know what? My bucket list might have some food items on there too. But uh, playing in the Amazon boxes, getting, getting combed, uh, just licking some of the Starbucks. It just, you know, we have to be creative. Oh gosh, look at Charlie. Charlie's the orange and white cat. It was to go to the beach and, and Charlie enjoyed going out. So again, cats and dogs that uh, if it's going to stress them out, don't do it. Um, here's that one uh, snug in mom's hoodie and then going for a walk out um, uh, when the weather was nice. And then this is Sina and uh, Sina's mom actually works at Lap of Love. And, uh, and so for a gift, I, we had Sina's bucket list made all into illustrations as well. So sushi dinner, uh, have his own cake, photo shoot again, yoga with mom, beach visit, matching outfits, Amazon boxes, zoomies, a, a laser pointer. So I, I really do think it's very therapeutic to, uh, to make some of these. And then I'm always going to encourage the best birthday parties towards the end as well. So look at here, we've got Lily turning 16. We've got the queen here with her 18 year old hat on 15 years. And look at this big guy at 16 years old and share these on your social media and things like that, because you'll never get more likes than an older dog or cat and, and highlighting their awesomeness and how much you, you love them. Now, anticipatory grief is a thing. And what it is, is, is the emotions that we have before the, the, the passing happens. And I think all of us with a, a very advanced age pet or one that's got a terminal illness, we start to worry about when they're not there anymore. And that's simply just anticipatory grief. And it is, it is something that, um, that we talk about with our families. At Lap of Love, we actually have a pet loss support uh, group that does free Zoom to anyone. You don't have to use Lap of Love. Anybody who's going through grief from a loss, we have uh, daily, almost daily uh, webinars that are free Zoom. And once a month, we do one specifically on anticipatory grief because a lot of people very much struggle with it. And then all they do is hyper-focus on the bad stuff and the, the uh, impeding loss. And I think bucket lists can really help. And another thing I like to encourage is saying, I love you to your pet. And this is a picture of uh, Dr. Uh, Kubler-Ross and she's written on death and dying and she was, um, which for humans, but in there, they, the studies have found that people will grieve more if they didn't get a chance to say, I love you. So I always prescribe to my hospice families to say, I love you to your pet every day, because if you don't, you'll wish you did one more time. And the one, um, the one cat, one pet that I grieve the most still after all the ones that I've, that I've lost is my cat Goldie. She's here, uh, pictured there. She's black. She had gold eyes. So, uh, I adopted her as well. So her name was Goldie at the time. And, um, Sadly, she was, she was taken from me uh, by a coyote and I never got to say goodbye to her. And that is still the one I grieve. And I grieve, of course, with the way that she passed. And so as a, as a person that's job is to make sure passings are good, um, it, really, it really hit home. So I wish I could have said, I love you one more time. So that should be on every list is saying, I love you. And then when it comes time to say goodbye, and here's me and my girl, Sam. Uh, is to make it a really good goodbye, whether it's in a, in a clinic, on the beach, at your home, or something like that. 
and do crazy fun things for them on that last day. And here's Sam. I let her go on Valentine's Day. And I went to my food store and I got Valentine cupcakes. And I said, you can eat as many cupcakes as you want. And she darn well enjoyed those cupcakes. <laughs> and she even got a little on her nose. So I hope this was just, like I said, inspirational, a little bit fun. Um, as Jackie mentioned, I do have a book called It's Never Long Enough. And I came up with that name because so many families, when they would tell me, or people, when people say the age of their pet, they'll say, oh, well, he's 16. You know, he's allowed at 16. And, and somebody always say, oh, that's really good. And I don't think it's good. I, I want more. I want like 32 years. So instead of saying that's really good, I always say it's never long enough. And so this is a, 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 a very book book that, big book that covers aging, how we can um, slow the aging process down a little bit and how to manage all the symptoms that we may see with our aging dog. So vision issues, hearing issues, mobility, incontinence, things like that. And also I do talk about bucket list, quality of life assessment and saying goodbye. Its sister book is for cats and that's nine lives are not enough. And then I've got, again, those activity books and some journals and the journals have uh, the bucket list sheets, but you can just write it on a piece of paper. You don't need journals or anything like that. So I hope this was a, you know, a, a more fun one. And please ask any questions uh, if you have any. Hi, Jackie. Hi. I'll get to our questions. And I actually got it on a couple that might help people too. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, Jennifer is saying, we are creating bucket lists for our senior pets or shelter pets. And we'd love to direct our adopters to the grief support group. So thank you so much for that insightful time. Oh, yes. So great. Good. I'm going to, in the meantime, while we're talking, because I can multitask sometimes, I'm going to get the link and I'll put it in the chat. But lapoflove.com is our website, but I'll get you the exact uh, link and pop it in there for uh, the pet loss. You can find it on the website, but why not get it to you even easier? And that's a great, I mean, I'll touch on that as well, because I, I was with... I was with um, a shelter, um, I know, shelter is, I know is, well, I feel like I'm echoing well, now. Um, echoing. Is it echoing no. for y'all? Okay. No, not for me. Um, so a shelter I know that's been as no kill as possible is really just at a point where they are having euthanized dogs that have been there for a very long time and long-term volunteers are also getting to be with the dog. So this is a nice resource for those folks that, um, you know, are very attached to dogs that have to be put to sleep. So that's a hundred percent. Yes. And I used to work in a shelter actually. So I, so I, I understand how attached we become and those that are older and they stay there, like it, it, you know, there's, there's, there's just an enormous love and attachment for them. And so I do think it's, it's very helpful. And I have often given lectures to shelters for on, on assessing quality of life, because I think sometimes volunteers, um, uh, they also don't always, they, they, this is very generalized, so I don't mean to be, but they have a hard time saying goodbye and they may think, well, you know, he's nice to me or, you know, he's, I could handle this mobility issue or I can handle incontinence or I can handle this oral melanoma, but that's not an easy dog to adopt or care for. And sometimes they struggle with the decisions that we have to make at a shelter. So, um, so I, I've often done lectures that I think have helped the shelters volunteers understand why we have to say goodbye and maybe they can do a bucket list before that to really give that dog the best time you know if it's a weekend or what have you or a week so that's really great a couple of things while yes. you were talking I was wondering how, when do you decide the bucket list I, I get it if it's um you know this weekend we're probably gonna have to put fluffy down but sometimes like you said um like the anticipatory grief I, my dog was diagnosed with a heart murmur and then I, I spent three years wondering when was the time it was going to happen. I, 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 I know. Those times more. And I think there's a lot of people that, um, you know, their dog yes. has something, but they don't know when is the time that's coming. So do you suggest Agreed. like as their elder years come to start doing awesome Absolutely. <laughs> Abs Listen, we can have multiple lists, right? So I would much rather start when they're elderly to do the, the more grand things, right? So go camping with the with your dog before they're incontinent and you can't have them in a tent and things like that, right? So I would love for people to start soon. I would love for, for pets to, to um, enter hospice sooner because the sooner we can get them help and the family help, they actually live longer and live better. 
So, um, so doing, doing things early for all, for everything in life, right? Taking care of ourselves earlier would be helpful. So doing bucket lists early is great. And then you could do, do more. Um, so you, it doesn't mean you're like, oh, I did one. Now I can't do another one. And sometimes you're limited if it's the last weekend, you can't get a photo shoot set up. You can't go to a certain, the weather's not good to do stuff. Right. So I would encourage people to do it way, way more sooner and do a couple of them, right? And so, but ideally, the like the last six months is um, is super helpful. Awesome. And then someone else is asking, is there a place they can hear your other lectures? I mean, you've done webinars for us that are all on our Facebook, you can sit through on our website, but is there other places you have your own lectures as well? Oh, they, uh, so I actually have my own YouTube channel, which I don't have my full lectures, but uh, not all, all of them. I have a ton of different lectures, but my YouTube channel is um, Dr. Mary Gardner. So, uh, you know, YouTube forward slash Dr. Mary Gardner. All my social media is Dr. Mary Gardner, including YouTube. But in there specifically, I, I've got a lot of um, uh, uh, interviews with some, with some other specialists. So I, I have one specifically on a disease called Cushing's. I have one on laryngeal paralysis, on Alzheimer's, things like that. So I do a lot of that. And I do have, um, what I consider my most important one, which is assessing quality of life. I do have that in my YouTube channel. Awesome. Awesome. And then another, I was wondering how do folks cope if they don't finish the bucket list? If I know. Uh, yeah, I know. So that, so we should be mindful of what we're putting on there and like not making such a long one that like my friend with Fig Newton, like, did you finish everything? Cause that was a long list and we don't want to have regrets for not. So these are hopeful things that we hope to do. And it's not, you know, if you get to do all of them, that's, that's, that's great. But I think, um, I think making sure that it's, it's realistic, not just the, the number of them. So I would say like 10 max things to do, but also what you put on there. Like I, you know, I of course gave the example of going to the beach, but, um, you know, throwing a party may, may be too anxious, like too much for a dog, right? Like it could be, you know, having too many people could upset them. So making sure that we, that we monitor what they can do. Thanks. Check Facebook and see if I'm missing any. Uh, oh, that's right. I forgot we're over there too. Facebook yeah. and see if I'm missing any. Oh, that's what you're saying over there. <laughs> Laura, Amanda, am I missing anything over there? I'm just seeing some nice <laughs> comments. Um, thank you so much for this. Very touching and helpful. And then Jenny added that they share their bucket list with our volunteers so that everyone can participate. Love it. I love it. And it could be, so, I mean, I love the shelter idea. And I know that, you know, I'm on the board also with Gray Muzzle. So I love to see all the shelters that are that are um, needing the help that we've got. And it could be something also like this dog got a dental clean because we know dentals are a huge thing, right? And so getting a, you know, fresh breath could be on the, dent, on the bucket list. And that could be a great way to put on social media and highlight this dog and maybe get a forever home even, right? So like sometimes bucket lists can, can turn into um, to some good things. We all should be starting the bucket list now for ourselves, right? I just turned 50 and I got a couple of things on my bucket list that I should be hitting now, hopefully. <laughs> It's very true, though. I mean, positioning it that, that way to your supporters to say, can you help us complete so-and-so's bucket list? Oh, gosh. Right. I love it. You know? I got so that's chills. a good way, too. I love it. Because, again, it, it could be their retirement bucket list. It doesn't have to be their end-of-life their... bucket list. Right. No. And that's, and that, you know, that's what the name came, like kicking the bucket. Like, that's how it came from, <laughs> right? So we could be calling it something, but like the retirement plan. I yeah. would love that. I think I think you'll get a lot of donations and or you know things to sponsor that. Which I mean, that's yeah. a great idea, Jackie. I, we just came up with a great. Well, you came up with a great idea. <laughs> so we're here for saving some seniors. I love it. Saving seniors. So next, next time the webinar, everyone's going to tell us what they did and who sponsored their yes. bucket list. I love it. But yes. people will get really. I can see supporters loving. You know, checking off a. Uh, thing too that's so like oh my gosh to do yeah and they may also volunteer some things like like if one of them is a photographer or something like that right they'll come and do pictures like oh i can't handle it can't <laughs> handle it so cute well i think that's all thank you so much okay. for this so close to our hearts and again i just want to remind folks wherever you are 
And if you know someone that is, you know, nearing end of life with their pet, I think Lap of Love is such an amazing resource to have your pet be able to pass at home where they're most comfortable. A lot of pets are so anxious at the vet to start with. I recommend yeah. it constantly to people. Um, oh, so they're just you. not anxious in their last moments. Um, so yeah. that's just something to consider if it's available by you. Awesome. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. All right. We'll see you soon. Right. Remember, our auction is June 7th. Everyone tune in for that online. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Thank you again.